Graduation is an opportunity to celebrate both an ending and a beginning. Today, this Mass is dedicated to the graduates of 2020. We pray for the graduates and their families as they both continue to, to display courage and commitment to help one another through these times. As we move forward, we ask God to guide our graduates in making decisions that will promote the service of Jesus in both our words and actions. Let us strive to become better disciples of Jesus by helping to carry his cross and extending his mission. We also offer prayerful thanks to those who have helped guide the graduates in their faith. As we celebrate today's Mass, please keep the graduates in your thoughts and prayers. It's good to be able to see you and to celebrate the Holy Mass with you now, dear students of Immaculate Heart of Mary School, with your families, your parents, and with your teachers. It's also good to be able to acknowledge our graduates at this Mass in a special way. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we celebrate this sacred mystery, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the Holy Mass. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who adorn creation with splendor and beauty and fashion human lives in your image and likeness, awaken in every heart reverence for the work of your hands and renew among your people a readiness to nurture and sustain your precious gift of human life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm is, the Lord is compassion and love. The Lord is compassion and love. My soul give thanks to the Lord. All my being bless his holy name. My soul give thanks to the Lord. And never forget all his blessings. The Lord is compassion and love. The Lord is compassion and love slow to anger and rich in mercy. As a father has compassion on his sons, the Lord has pity on those who fear him. The Lord is compassion and love. The love of the Lord is everlasting upon those who hold fear in him. His justice reaches out to children's children when they keep his covenant in truth. 
The Lord is compassion and love. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and angels, but I do not have love, I am, noisy, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in the wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we all know only in part, and we prophesy, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I only know in part, then I will know fully, even as I have behaved, been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke on your shoulders and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear fellow parishioners and dear students, it certainly has been a very trying time, a challenging time for all of us. And in the midst of it all, as students, perhaps you've had that experience that you're still learning and that there's people teaching you, probably more likely than not, your own family and your parents are becoming part of your education in an even more obvious way than ever. And that's maybe something good that's come out of this pandemic. And that teaching can go on during the summer as well, that we can learn from the great book of the God's beautiful creation over the summertime, perhaps a starry summer night around a campfire, if we're allowed to do that, perhaps just being out on the backyard at nighttime or to go for a walk during the day 
and in other ways, uh, sharing what we learn about God through the experiences of the summertime. I'd like to read to you a book that talks about those sorts of things. It talks about how handy it is to have someone in your life who knows the Bible, because that person can go to the Bible and answer questions about life from the wisdom of the Bible. And so uh, also it talks a good bit about how we can learn about God through the goodness of creation. The title of the book is, Does God Know How to Tie Shoes? And it starts, Mama, what does God wear? I don't know, Katrina, but he dresses the hills with joy. So he knows how to dress. He dresses the hills with joy and the meadows with sheep. And the flowers never have to worry about what to put on. I think God wears orange beads when the sun comes up, and he wears a big gray hat when it rains. So it's the beginning of the talk between Katrina and her mother. And now, does God know how to tie shoes, Papa? The answer, by his word, the heavens and earth were made. He breathed, and the stars took their place. Then God, then God must know how to tie shoes as well. So the idea being, if he can do all those things, he can know how to tie up shoes as well. Mama, how does God talk? Sometimes he whispers in a still, small voice, like when you hold a, she a seashell to your ear. Sometimes he roars over the water and his glory thunders. Like a lion, Mama? Yes, a great, kind lion. Does God have wings, Papa? God wraps his love around us like the wings of a mother hen protecting her baby chicks. And he knows all, he knows how all the birds fly. God probably loves crows too. Mama, does God get cold and hungry? Well, he feels sad when people are cold and hungry. God must shiver when he sees old Joe in his torn coat. When it snows, I will give him my mittens, says young Katrina. That's, of course, old Joe, the one who's cold because he needs a coat. Does God ever cry, Papa? Yes, I think he does. Because of the cold, hungry people? Yes. And when people can't live together without fighting? And when Thomas pulls Sarah's hair? It's so long, she can sit on it. Mama, does God have any pets? The animals and birds of the forest are his, and every cow on a thousand hills. Maybe God would like us to get a puppy. Isn't that what sometimes you ask your parents if they can, we can get a puppy? Does God ever sing, Papa? Probably. He rejoices with the fields and sings with the trees while the rivers clap. I think I see God riding on a cloud. That makes me sing. Mama, is God sad when he doesn't get a letter? God does like to hear from us, Katrina. We call that prayer. 
It can be a way of talking or singing or playing my drum, says she. Does God like to paint, Papa? He paints the sunrise and the sunset and spreads out the heavens like a cloth. I'll bet he likes painting rainbows best of all, just like me. There's Katrina painting a rainbow down by the ocean. Mama, does God ever have to clean up his room? He wakes the dawn and makes sure the seasons change. Yes, he keeps everything in order. So, <clears throat> because God keeps things in order, it'd be good for Katrina to try to keep her room in order. That's the idea. But she says, but even in his closet, if you're like me, I put all this kinds of stuff in my closet where people can't see it. Does God go to sleep, Papa? No, Katrina, God never sleeps. But doesn't he ever get tired? Well, he did rest after making this world. But Mama, where in the world is God now? God is here when we talk together. He is with you when you feel happy and when you feel sad. And scared too? Yes, when you are scared, he is there. God is always with you. There's Katrina with Mama. She certainly feel, looks like she's feeling very safe there. Papa, does God know my name? Oh, yes, and the stars in the heavens, too. Good night, Mama. Good night, Papa. Good night, God. I'm Katrina with a K. May you all have a very blessed summer and uh, get to know God a little better over the summertime. Dear Father in heaven, we offer you our prayers for these young people, for their families, for the entire church and the entire world. The response to the petitions is, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Father Bill and Seminary and Daniel that God will continue to bless them with good health, strength, and energy throughout the year as they continue to attend to the needs of our parish community. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the graduates of Immaculate Heart of Mary School. May the Spirit of the Lord fill you and empower you with the gifts you received at confirmation. May you reach your potential and make the difference in this world today. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are suffering from a lack of food, shelter, or other necessities of life, that God will fill them with his spirit and he will hear the calls for their help. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for God's protection of all his children, for the safety of everyone during this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. In addition, we pray for the healthcare workers and all those on the front lines as they continue to serve their neighbors. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have turned away from God or do not know that God will hear their call and turn towards him as they lead a life filled with faith, love, and service to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all the souls of the faithfully departed. May the Lord let his perpetual light shine upon them and grant him eternal rest. We pray to the Lord. We will conclude our prayers by par uh, praying the parish prayer. The parish prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, come by the means of the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse, upon the parishioners of Immaculate Heart of Mary Parish. Amen.
<clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ. For he humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord our God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who bring forth bread from the earth to sustain our lives and wine to gladden the heart, be pleased to accept these gifts and make them the sacrament of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our, prayers, uh, our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us bless one another with the sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you, peace be with you, peace be with you, peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. May the statement of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ be eternal life for the soul of sin. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Lord God, and by the love of God, work of your mercy, and the death of God our Father, do we now receive eternal life for the Lord from all our sins and that of the world. We do not expect that you will grant us this.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my glory, but only say the word. Dear students and all members of the IHM school community, we now make our act of spiritual communion, waiting for that day when we can gather together again. O oh Jesus, I turn toward the Holy Tabernacle, where you live hidden for love of me. I love you, O oh my God. I can't receive you in Holy Communion. Come, nevertheless, and visit me with your grace. Come spiritually into my heart. Purify it, sanctify it, render it like unto your own. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us Confirm our resolve, O God, by the life-giving body and blood of your Son, that we may live always for others and cherish your sacred gift of human life. Through Christ our Lord. and then a final blessing for all of us. Gracious and loving God, we ask now for your almighty hand to be upon our graduates as they and their families celebrate this grand milestone. 
May they find comfort from this community's continued embrace and support as they journey through life. May they find strength in the excellence of their academic preparation. Bless their lives from this day on with goodness and success. Enable them to stay true to their dreams for your greater glory, to discern what is right, good, and just, and to use their gifts wisely and in the service to others. Empower them to walk into the future with faith, hope, and great love, guided by your light, so that they may use their talents to, in the words of St. Ignatius of Loyola, go forth and set the world on fire. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Good morning, boys and girls, family members, staff, and members of the Immaculate Heart of Mary Parish community. My apologies for not being able to celebrate in church with you, but like the rest of you, am observing from a distance. First and foremost, as always, thank you to Father Bill for this opportunity to celebrate the Mass as a Catholic school community, and as well to him and Seminarian Daniel for all their continued efforts, their spiritual leadership, especially during these challenging times that we've uh, experienced, but as well throughout the year. Thank you to the pastoral team of the IHM Parish community for their efforts over the past little while, but once again, since September. Thank you, Fiona, Matthew, Sarah, for being participants in the Mass today through their readings, and to Massimo and Analia and the three of them for all their leaderships as part of Student Council this year. Thank you to Mrs. Custetician and Mrs. Slack, certainly for preparing for the Mass today, but for all their efforts in ensuring that grade eight graduation this year, while be it a virtual one and one from a distance, will be a memorable one. First and foremost, I thank you boys and girls for all your learning while being at home. I believe we're going into our almost third month and you've done very well. I'm very, very proud of you. Thank you parents for your ongoing support. I know it's been challenging. Some of you having to work while also teach at home. And the same would be for our staff. First, of course, thank you to them for all the preparations, but as well for the many of them who've had to do the same as you uh, mom and dads in that teaching while as well teaching their own at home so thank you all as a team we have made it through and will continue to make it through these challenging times if i can most important almost i want to say a few things to the grade eights i'll share more this evening during graduation however i especially want to thank them I want to thank them for the many of them who've been at IHM for the past 10 years, and albeit some of them may be a little less, thank them for all of their contributions while at our school. You've all left a lasting impression in the memories of all at IHM, but to me, you've left an imprint in my heart in the very short time we spent together. While sad that our final year together was cut short, your academic and personal lives are just beginning, and I know I will continue to hear and be proud of the many things that you will continue to do. Once again, I'll see you at graduation tonight. It's without a doubt that I know you will all leave again a lasting impression in all the hearts and memories of the many you will meet in years to come. To everyone in the IHM school community, Boys and girls, parents, staff, or as I say often, young and old, please know that I miss you, I love you, and while we'll see some of you soon, should you come into the school to pick up your items, or to the school to pick up your items in a few days time, I look forward to the day where we can be together each and every day. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a restful and enjoyable summer, you've all earned it. See you in September, 
and God bless each and every one of you.